Hello, I'm Dr. Max Thornsbury. I'm a dairy technical specialist with Milk Specialties Global Animal Nutrition. And I'm going to make a video here today to demonstrate the complexity and simplicity of mixing milk replacer. I have a colleague, a former colleague, Rob Costello, that has recorded a YouTube video for the Mix Milk Specialties YouTube site entitled the science of mixing milk replacer, and there is a science. I'm going to demonstrate to you today some of the complexities of what we deal with in getting milk replacer mixed properly. I want to explain a couple of things. Milk coming out of a cow's udder has a total osmolarity of 270. It's the same from a breast milk, from a dog's uh, nipple, from a sow, every Mammalian milk may vary some in protein and in fat, but it'll have an osmolarity of 270. That is what we are trying to emulate when we make milk replacer. And we have some complexity with that. Milk replacer powder has 50 things in it that are not found in milk. Milk does not have vitamin A and D and vitamin E. That's why when you go to the grocery store and buy a gallon of milk, it says vitamin A and D fortified. It does not contain significant amounts of copper and manganese and zinc or selenium. These ingredients were met by God to be picked up from eating little buds of things out in the pasture. Calves were reborn in the spring. Every day got warmer. More forage was available. The calf would go around and pick a little bloom here and a little bud there. He's out in the sun all day long. Uh, making vitamin D, picking up vitamin E and A, getting his copper, his manganese and zinc. Whole milk does not have those things in it and whole milk was never intended to have those things in it. So to replace those losses while we're raising a calf in confinement, there are about 50 things in here that aren't in milk. B12, folic acid, vitamin C, I, the list goes on and on. For that reason, not everything that is in this milk replacer powder dissolves in water. We keep talking about it dissolving, but it doesn't dissolve, it suspends. The ability for these things to suspend in water depends on the temperature of the water. And we want you to mix this milk replacer at about 108 to 110 degrees, so that once you've added the powder to it and mixed it up, you can be feeding it to that calf about the same temperature to come out of the cow's udder, which is about 100 to 101 degrees. Now, if we mix milk replacer too hot, we also run the risk of damaging those ingredients. Some of these ingredients are very heat labile. Things like B complexes. Um, our, our vitamin E is very sensitive to temperature. And although we have some veal milk replacers that are being marketed that they want you to mix at 130 to 150, they're adding a lot more of these nutrients in order to compensate for the losses that are going to occur. They are mixing at those extremely high temperatures to emulsify the fat. We don't have that problem at milk specialties because we've already emulsified the fat. We have a protein encapsulated fat that will suspend in water and allow the calf to take in the nutrition that it needs without you having to beat it half to death in a mixer at 140 degrees. Now, we cannot fit milk replacer, two full quarts of water. This is an even 10 ounces of powder. Mix this up and it's going to be more than a two quart bottle will hold. It's because not all these things dissolve. Some just suspend. They add volume to the total. This is a two quart bottle. I can't get but two quarts in here, but when I mix this up, this will not fit in a two quart bottle. For the same reasoning, you can't get two quarts in a two quart esophageal feeder. Remember that we do not, we do not tube milk or milk replacer. The reason for that is there's a sugar in here called lactose. It's a dimer sugar, it's half galactose and half glucose, but when it hits the rumen where a tube is going to place this liquid, doesn't get through the esophageal groove and go directly down to the fourth stomach, there are bacteria in the stomach of that calf that break that lactose down into lactic acid. 
Once the lactic acid is broken down and absorbed by the bloodstream, it feeds back on the back of the brain stem into the sucking center of the brain. That's a collection of neurons that are responsible for the neurological impulses that allow a calf to suck. When that lactic acid builds up to a certain point, the sucking reflex stops because it's a way to the physiology of the calf says, hey, that milk didn't go in the right place. I'm not, we're not going to eat any more of that milk. We're not taking any more milk in until something else gets corrected. So we do not tube milk and milk replacer. We can tube colostrum because the stomach is sterile at birth. There are no bacteria in there to break the lactose down. About the first 24 hours, first 12 hours, we can get by with it. And I'm not saying that you couldn't get by with tubing a time or two, but you tube the calf, he doesn't want to suck. You tube him again, he doesn't want to suck. You tube him again, and he doesn't want to suck. And you just start this cascade of having a calf that will not suck because you shut off his sucking center. So let's take a look. We have 10 ounces of powder, milk replacer powder. We have this tape at the very top of where two exact quarts are measured. And I'm going to put this in this gallon jug. And we're going to mix it up. Now this is a partially agglomerated milk replacer, which means the fat is agglomerated. The other ingredients are mixed in. But you can see how easily that mixed. A few whisk of the whisk. How about that? A few whisk of the whisk makes it totally mixed up and ready to feed. Now, I want to say one thing. Don't overmix milk replacer. If you overmix milk replacer, you're going to drive the proteins off of the fat. And when you do that, the fat's going to rise to the top of that milk replacer just like cream does on whole milk when you stick it in the fridge. And boy, I'm going to tell you that cream is the most fantastic thing you have ever seen to put on a piece of pie, especially when it's all clumped up. That's what's going to happen right here. Your first cast is going to get the liquid. The last cast is going to get the fat. And you're not going to be feeding a calf the proper proportions. Now, I want you to notice where the liquid level is now. It is above, get some of this off of the side here, a little foam on the side. You'll notice, if my videographer can catch it, that now, instead of being level with the top of the tape, we're a half inch above the top of the tape. Why is that? Because ingredients in the milk replacer did not dissolve. They are suspended. They add volume. Now I have a lot of producers that like to mix a five gallon bucket of milk replacer and then dip it out and feed it in a bucket or put it in their bottles as they go down the line. You cannot put five gallons of water in here and add to that the proper amount of powder, it will fill this bucket up and spill it up over the top. Because we've expanded it here very significantly because many of the ingredients do not dissolve. So you put four gallons of milk replacer in here. 10 ounces to two quarts and 80 ounces of powder will give you the four gallons of milk replacer that you need uh, to feed calves. That is a very important and practical point. Now, what are we trying to do with milk replacer? We're trying to provide all of the extra nutrients to the calf that don't exist in milk, but at the same time, we want to provide that as close to the exact same percentage and osmolarity that the calf would normally be getting if he was suckling his mother. In order for us to do that, we have to be very careful how much sugar we add, what kind of uh, proteins we add, things that would dissolve in here. Osmolarity is a measure of everything that's dissolved in a solution. You realize that fat does not dissolve in water. If you go to the restaurant and have oil and vinegar dressing, they bring you the oil, they bring you the vinegar, you put them on separately, or they bring them in a jar together, and you must shake them up before you put them on the salad. You set them back on the table and a few minutes later, since the fat has less density than the water, it rises to the top. The same is true with the fat that's in milk replacer. It does not dissolve, it does not add to osmolarity. You can add additional fat to a milk replacer and you would be increasing the solids but having a reduction of the osmolarity because you have diluted out the milk replacer. 
And people say, oh, I can't add, I can't add fat because it increases the solids. It's not exactly the solids that we're interested in, it's the total osmolarity. I have put as much as five ounces of a 60%, 7% protein, 60% fat and 7% protein dry emulsified fat into two quarts, which really raises it up and fed that to a calf with no issues and I am actually diluting the total osmolarity. So percent solids is a little bit of a misnomer. We're trying to emulate about 13 percent solids. That means we're going to make our measurements based on weight. We take the weight of the two quarts of water, we add the weight of 10 ounces of powder, and now when we add them all together and divide by 100, we have 13 percent solids. I've written a book called dairy, the Dairy Calf Production Protocol Book. This is the eighth edition. And uh, if you do not have one and you're feeding a milk specialties made milk replacer, you need to visit with your sales rep and get one. This book covers everything about raising a calf from birth to eight weeks. And on page um, 42, I have a table that shows you how the impact of mixing affects osmolarity. If we put um, two quarts of water and eight ounces of powder on top of it, our osmolarity is 260. That's just about perfect. But we'd like to get a little bit more nutrition in the calf, and so we're going to put 10 ounces, like I did here, on top of two quarts, and that puts our osmolarity at 325. That's about the same as Gatorade. We can get by with that. But we sure don't want to get our osmolarity too much higher. An osmolarity of four or five or 600 can cause diarrhea in the calf, especially whenever that calf is under two weeks of age. It's kind of like drinking prune juice. If you drank a 10 ounce glass of prune juice this morning, I'd probably have to knock on the door of the bathroom to get to speak with you because it's going to pull water into your digestive tract because the osmolarity of prune juice is about 1200 and it is going to suck water into your intestine and allow you to have the laxative effect. The other thing I have done on page 54 of this book, I have how to mix milk replacer with large volumes of water. In this instance, we start with two quarts and we go to a gallon, five gallons, end up to 125 gallons. This allows you to put the right amount of powder into the right amount of water to achieve the exact same mix that we have right here. 13% solids. And this is a very uh, complicated calculation, particularly if you're going to feed 109 calves today and 111 calves tomorrow and the first of next week you're going to feed 120. You have to change that by, and also maintain this same ratio. And we, are, we have tables that we can put together for you that are feeding large numbers of calves to do that. You can hang it on the wall close to where you're mixing and we'll tell you exactly how to mix this milk replacer. I cannot overemphasize how significantly important it is to mix this milk replacer properly. It is 10 ounces of weighed powder on top of two full quarts of 110 to 108 degree water mixed and fed immediately. Now why, Dr. Thornsbury, are you saying feed it immediately? Because remember I told you a number of these ingredients never dissolve. They're in suspension. And as that temperature goes down, those things that are in suspension fall out of suspension. They fall down to the bottom. Now if you have an agitator, a little rotator, I have a lot of people that are feeding a big volume tank behind a four-wheeler, put a little 12-volt um, circulator motor on there, pulls out the bottom, puts it back in the top the whole time they're feeding. That helps to reduce that settling of those things that are not dissolved. Now eventually, as it really cools, those things that are not dissolved are going to settle to the bottom. And so we want you to feed the milk replacer as quickly as possible. The physiology of the calf is designed to digest and utilize milk replacer at 100 degrees, just like he took out of his mother's tit. Now if you change that dramatically, let's say it goes down to 85 or it goes up to 110, calves are not going to have the same digestive physiology. 110 they won't drink it anyway because it burns. If you don't think that burns, just jump in a 110 degree water hot tub and I guarantee you won't stay there a half a second before you're back out. So getting this at the right temperature, at the right solids, feeding it at the right time, the right volumes consistently 
is a very important part of what we do raising calves. It's the simplicity of feeding milk replacer, but the complexity of the science and the chemistry. Don't let the complexity scare you, just follow some basic directions. Now, I want everyone that mixes milk replacer to have a scale like this. I don't get anything from Taylor. I bought this at Walmart. These are not expensive scales. I think this one costs 12 or 13 dollars. This thing is an electronic scale that runs on a battery. It'll weigh up to 30 pounds. You put your cup on there, you turn it on, and it will be zeroed. You'll have all zeros. It gives you the ability to weigh in pounds or ounces. You add enough milk replacer to make that be equal to 10 ounces. You take a Sharpie and draw a line on that. And for that particular lot number of milk replacer, that's where you're going to get 10 ounces for each feeding. Now I want you to know that milk replacer changes in density. And my former colleague, Rob Costello, made that point. Depending on if it's a humid day when it was made, if it's a really dry, arid day when it was made, um, just lots of things can impact it so that 10 ounces may not exactly fit that line when you get your next lot number. So each time you get a new lot number, a milk replacer, weigh out exactly what 10 ounces is, make a line on there, and that's how you're going to mix your milk replacer. These scales are pretty phenomenal. <clears throat> I use them for a lot of different things, and you probably should have one in your milk house. They're very durable. Uh, they're a cooking scale and I think you'll find that they're an excellent tool. Easy on, easy off, runs on two AAA batteries, uh, tears very easily, weighs about anything you want. Now, the last thing I want to discuss with you is the BRICS refractometer. This is a, a optical BRICS refractometer. They also make electronic, they're all optical, but the electronic reads the number for you. This one has a scale in it, and you must look at a light. It's like you're looking through a rifle scope. And when things have fat in them, the line of demarcation is wider. In other words, this is refracting light through a prism, like you did when you were in grade school, and your teacher took the prism and it made a rainbow over on the wall. Well, that's exactly what this is doing. And Dr. Bricks, at uh, the end of the 1800s, devised this system to measure the amount of sugar that was in grape juice to know what the optimum amount of time to pick, pick grapes was for making wine. They also use it for cider making and various other things. You'll even find that uh, some forage harvesters will not harvest, harvest forage until it reaches a certain brick scale. It's measuring the amount of sugar that's in a solution. Now we could do the same thing with milk replacer because milk replacer has sugar in it, it has lactose. And we can use this scale to approximate, approximate what the percent solids are. Now I'm going to stir this a little bit, make sure it's well mixed. I'm going to take this eyedropper and run some milk up and in and out it two or three times so I don't have any water in there to dilute it. I'm going to put a drop of it right on the prism. And then I'm going to put a glass slide on top of the prism. And I'm going to mash it out so that it's a thin layer. Then I'm going to look up here and I'm going to read the line of demarcation. Now it's a, it's a pretty difficult line to read in reality because the fat messes up the line. In other words, the line is wider than it should be. This is reading about a 22% bricks, and that's going to equate to about a 12.5 or 13% solids. I am not overly impressed with the brick scale. I much rather would use a refractometer that measures this specific gravity, and I have a conversion chart here. And you can uh, look at the specific gravity, you know the specific gravity of water is 1. So when you put anything in, unless it's solid fat and water's not there, it's going to be more than one. And so a 22% bricks on this scale, 22% bricks is about 1.92 to 1.93. That specific gravity is a much, much better scale to use. It's extremely accurate. The brick scale is pretty difficult at times to read, 
and um, the accuracy of it is not that great. Now, if you want to know what the Brix is, there is a formula. You take the Brix reading off of here, and um, in this case, the Brix reading, I said it was 22, is 11.2. If you look, if you take 11.2 and add 2, what do you end up with? 13.2, and that's right where we want to be. Now, that's as accurate as you're going to get with the bricks. This is probably about a 13 to a 12, uh, maybe just a touch over 13. As close as you're going to get with the bricks, it's probably fairly accurate. I would much rather your accuracy be in how you weigh the product. Remember, the brick scale does not tell us the osmolarity. The brick scale approximates the percent solids. Now, we can add a whole lot more fat, get a whole lot more solids, and still kept the osmolarity down. We're trying to emulate in our total osmolarity somewhere around that 300 to 350 range. We can't get to 70. The reason we can't get to 70 is because we got 50 things in here that aren't in milk. But we don't want to get it too high or we end up having a prune juice effect on the calves. So let's, uh, let's just review what I'm talking about. We never, under any circumstances, tube feed milk or milk replacer. This tube will bypass the esophageal groove and put all of this right directly into the first stomach where bacteria will convert this lactose into lactic acid, end result being to shut off the sucking reflex. Remember that if you mix the milk replacer properly and you take two full quarts of water and put 10 ounces of powder on top of it and mix it, to approximate that 13% solids, it will no longer fit in that two-quart bottle. It won't fit. You'll have to either have three-quart bottles or feed a little less than two quarts of a product you already have mixed up. You cannot make five gallons of milk replacer in a five-gallon bucket. It is not possible. This gives you that understanding, I hope, very clearly. The top of that tape was two quarts of water. I added 10 ounces of milk replacer, and now I'm a half inch above the tape. Multiply that by if this is five gallons, the ten feedings that are going to be in here and add a half inch to all of them and you're going, you can't mix five gallons. You can put the five gallons of water in, uh, put the hundred ounces of powder and start mixing and it's just going to flow up over the side. What you mix in a five gallon bucket is four gallon of milk replacer. You put four gallon of 110 degree water, you put 80 ounces of powder on top of it, you mix it thoroughly, you can dip that out or pour it into your bottles or your buckets. You cannot make five gallons of milk replacer in a five gallon bucket. And if you have not been able to access one of my books and you're feeding a milk replacer that Milk Specialties Global makes, please speak with your salesperson or your distributor and we'll make sure you get a copy of this book. I think you'll find it very helpful. It covers just about anything and everything from the birth of the calf until it's 300 to 350 pounds. It has a table of context, contents you can go through and look up about any subject. There's acidified milk and milk replacer talking points. There's coccidiosis. Any subject that you might find of interest, you'll find in here. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and adding to it the science of milking, of mixing milk replacer that my former colleague Rob Costello has made available. Between the two of these videos, you should have a very clear and uh, nearly perfect understanding of how to properly milk, mix and feed milk replacer to raise good, healthy calves. Thank you very much.